rocking you up for Jesus Christ with classic style hard rock music and practical Bible teaching. Romans chapter 6. He says in Christ here in this chapter, the power of sin and death has been defeated. Now you got to understand what he means by some of these words to kind of get this. He lays out this argument. And he talks about dying and what happens when we physically die. He says, understand that that moment at which you did the Abraham thing, you heard the gospel and you turned away from your old life. We would use the word repentance. You turn away from your old life and your sin and you fix your eyes on God and you say, I'm going to follow you. Does that mean I'll never stumble? No. It means I don't live for this anymore. I live for you. And when we turned and we made that decision to follow him, Paul says, we were set free from the power of sin. This is huge, guys. Paul actually uses the illustration of marriage, but I think it's, it, since it's tax season, we'll really get this, okay? <laughs> we all get the fact that we are under an obligation, an inescapable obligation. They will hunt you down <laughs> to pay your taxes, right? As long as we breathe air and live. But when we die, we're set free from that. No more taxes after that, right? <laughs> that's maybe a little bit too obvious. But that's the point that Paul's trying to make. That With death comes a separation and he wants you to understand you've died to your old life. You've died. There's been a death. And so now you're set free from the power of sin to condemn you. And also the power of sin to control you. Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 4. He starts to talk about baptism. But he starts it with this statement. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Now, got to go back to the end of five just to kind of understand this phrase. He ends chapter five by making sure we understand once and for all the purpose of the law of Moses. He says the law of Moses, its whole goal was to reveal the awesome, holy righteousness of God and to expose how broken we are. He closes chapter 5 by saying that as the law is pointing out sin, don't get overwhelmed by that because where sin increases, grace increases more. That's important, isn't it? But now he's having to kind of pull it back and say, whoa, don't, don't turn that into a license. Well, then if grace increases when sin increases, let's just sin because that brings more glory to God. Grace can increase all the more. And he says, no, by no means, i.e., if you think that's what the gospel is about, you missed the point. The gospel is to call you out of that old life into a new one, a right relationship with God, and to put a new heart and a new spirit in you that moves you to want to live for God's glory. We are those, Paul says, who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? There's this spiritual union that happens when we are buried with Christ in this baptism. We are united with his death. And we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Jesus was resurrected. Hallelujah. We're going to celebrate that at Easter. We will experience that kind of a resurrection at the end. We'll talk about that more when we get to Revelation as well. But Paul says in our baptism, we've experienced a resurrection of sorts as well because we died to our old life and now we've been raised into a whole new one with Christ. Goes on in chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. For we know that our old self was crucified with him when we made that turn, dying to our old life. Crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves, catch that language, to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. 